Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, from time to time, I enjoy going out and playing a game of pool. Uh, I used to play in tournaments a long time ago, but I don't get a chance to do that anymore. Well, this week's project is wrapped around the pool table, more like the balls in the pool table. It is a custom billiard rack. This one's made out of walnut and maple, and if you happen to have a game room or a man cave or a pool table in your house or you know someone who does, it'd be a great little project to make for them. So if you stick around, I'll show you how I made it. Alright, to get started on the billiard rack, I've got a couple of things laid out on the table. I've got two pieces of scrap maple uh, that I've planed down to 5 eighths of an inch thick. And we're going to be gluing those together. Uh, and when all is said and done, we need an inch and a quarter block out of it. I've got some maple strips here uh, for, some, for an accent strip into the side of this rack. So the maple strips are 3 eighths of an inch wide, a uh, quarter inch tall. And I've got some walnut here, and the walnut is three-eighths of an inch thick. I planed it down to three-eighths of an inch thick. And right now it's about two inches wide, but we're going to be ripping it down. We're going to glue in some of these maple strips for an accent, and then when all is said and done, we'll cut it down to its final height of an inch and a quarter. I'm going to start off by gluing together the two scrap pieces of maple and go ahead and get that block made up. All right, probably a bit of overkill on the clamps, but uh, this is very important. These uh, block, this block we're gonna make is where we're gonna be cutting our three triangles out, and these triangles are gonna be the three corners of the rack, so I wanna make sure that uh, it's a good glue up. Uh, while this is in the clamps, I can go ahead and we can start focusing on the main body of the rack, which is the walnut, and go ahead and get our maple uh, accent strips glued in. Alright, for the rack, I'm going to use walnut, as I said earlier in the video, and I planed it down to three-eighths of an inch thick. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and rip this uh, two and three-eighths wide board in half, and I want to glue in some of these maple strips as an accent strip right down the center. So I've got my fence set up for an inch and three sixteenths to go ahead and make that rip. That way I can get the glue up done and then we can get, once it's all said and done, we can get this cut down to its final uh, height of an inch and a quarter. Okay guys, our block of maple I went ahead and ripped down to two and an eighth inches wide and now I'm going to cut 30 degree triangles out of it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off one corner and then I've got a jig set up here so I can get exact cuts for the three triangles that I need. Okay, for the walnut uh, sides, I need to go ahead and from the center, because I want my accent strip to be in the center, uh, 5 eighths in both directions, I need to rip those strips off uh, so I have an inch and a quarter piece left over. And those little strips, they'll just go right back into my bin and I'll use them in future projects.
When all is said and done, your maple blocks and your walnut and everything should be the same size. I've got just a small, small fingernail grab here, uh, which is fine because I'll be able to sand that down to that with no problem once everything is all glued together. But it's just a very, very small fingernail grab. So it's just a little proud and uh, I'm happy with it. All right, now I've got a stop block set up on the sled for 13 and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut three 13 and a quarter inch pieces out of it. All right guys, with the help of some double-sided tape, I've kind of got this together just to simulate what we're shooting for here. Um, but there's, the next part coming up is kind of the trickiest part in my opinion. Uh, and what we need to do is cut, make a mark on this piece here. And then we need to cut a small rabbit in here for the triangle to sit in. But at the bottom of that rabbit, where this is going to fit into, we need that point to be able to go in and sit flat. We don't want to cut a square rabbit, so our rabbit has to have a 30 degree cut on it. Uh, and I'm not explaining it probably correctly, but let me show you, uh, let me do a practice cut, show you what I'm talking about and give you a better idea. Okay guys, to better explain uh, and try to quickly explain what we're trying to do is, as I said, uh, we have to rabbit the ends of these pieces where these triangles sit, but at the end of, here's a scrap piece, at the end of that rabbit, we need to do like a little 30 degree bevel uh, at the end of it. So that way when these triangle pieces uh, go in, they will lock into place. Let me find a clean edge, that one needs to be sanded but they'll lock into place on there and be held into place when we glue it up. So what we need to do is uh, I've got it set up on the table saw with my blades tilted to 30 degrees and go ahead and clean up this rabbit and make that final cut but then we'll have to go back with a chisel and clean it out so that these pieces will sit in there. Okay, I've got my blade set to a 30 degree bevel and I've got it sticking above the table about a sixteenth of an inch on the high side of the blade. Um, and now I'm going to be using my miter gauge. The fence is here just so I know where to stop my cut um, because I'm going to clean up this cut by running it across the blade and I want to make sure that I stop in the same place every time. Okay, I found a little bit easier way to uh, remove that little piece of wood, and I'm not sure if you can see, uh, you won't be able to see it, but there's a little hump right there uh, that needs to be removed so that the triangle can sit in there nicely. Right now, when it's in there, you see how it lifts it up off there? There's a little hump in there that needs to be removed. The first cut I'm making is flush against the bottom of the rabbit and then I'm tilting the saw up and following the angle, that 30 degree angle to make the final cut. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to glue this up and there's a couple of things that I failed to mention or forgot to mention but it's quite important so let's backtrack for a second. You know how we cut all three of our pieces uh, to 13 and a quarter inches in length. Uh, the two side pieces are 13 and a quarter inches in length and the bottom piece needs to be cut to 12 and 7 eighths of an inch. 12 and 7 eighths of an inch. Now on those uh, angled cuts that I made 
where these triangles fit into the from the edge to the inside of that cut that angle cut is two and three sixteenths on each end of all three pieces. Now another thing that I failed to mention um, is that on our block, the maple block, our triangles, I said that we were cutting them at two and an eighth inches wide and that is true for the top one. It's two and an eighth inches wide. However, the bottom two are two and a half inches wide. So now all I need to do is glue this up. When the glue up's done, then we can go ahead and round everything off and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. But uh, I do apologize that I did not make note of those things earlier. Uh, I got occupied and totally slipped my mind. All right, so let's get it glued up. All right guys, well a creative clamping method here. Uh, the blue tape is absolutely strong enough to hold everything nice and firm uh, while the glue dries. I was testing out some other clamping methods such as little uh, brackets made with some scrap wood and hot glue, something that my bar clamps could grab a hold of. And uh, they didn't work on this side, they ended up breaking off. But anyway, the blue tape is fine and when this is done we'll move over to the drill press and get everything uh, cleaned up and rounded off. All right, well let's take a look. Everything looks good. I do have some glue squeeze out and stuff to clean out on the inside here, but I'll do that after we do the rounding uh, off of everything. And uh, But other than that, good glue joints, uh, nice seams, everything looks clean. So uh, let's go ahead and go over to the drill press and get everything rounded off on the inside and then we'll work on the outside. Alright, over here on the drill press, I've got a stop block with a 30 degree angle on it so this can fit up into there and be held pretty well and I've also got it clamped to the fence because the half of this Forstner bit is not hitting anything so it's going to want to jump a little bit uh, and I want to make sure that this does not move at all so with that being said here we go Ooh. Messy stuff. Now I'm using a two and an eighth inch Forstner bit uh, to hog and eat this stuff away. And as you can tell, well, minus all the little fuzzies, but it doesn't get all of it in the rounding it off. Uh, that's okay because we're going to be using a flush trim bit uh, and a pattern uh, here in just a minute that will clean all that up. But I do want to hog away a majority of this material right here. All right. Alright guys, I've taken some half inch birch plywood and I have two patterns. I have one for the inside and one for the outside. Right now I have the outside one attached to the rack. And on these patterns, I can run them up against my flush trim bit in the router, get everything cleaned up, get the final shape of the rack, and then I can move on to sanding and the final finish. All right, well, I appreciate you sticking with me through this build. I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you've got a game room or a man cave or, you know, a pool table in your house, uh, this is a nice little project to uh, add to your collection. Uh, if you don't or if you know somebody that has a pool table, this would be a great gift to give someone a custom-made rack for their pool table. Uh, I finished it off with a couple of coats of lacquer and some paste wax. All in all, I'm very happy with it. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'm ready to go play some pool. Until next week, guys. See you soon.